Hi there, welcome back to the new video. Today I'll be talking about this paper that's titled as Controllable Generation from Pre-trained Language Models via Inverse Prompting. This is from researchers from Shinghua University, Beijing Academy of Artificial Intelligence and Recurrent AI. And this came out this year itself in the month of June. So let's start with the abstract. So they say, last year pre-trained language models have demonstrated strong capabilities for generating realistic text. So yeah, that's pretty true because the field of text generation has made tremendous progress in recent years. And using the concept of prompt to the language model is one of the standard ways of how people usually generate text. But the use cases that require you to generate long sequences such as poem generation or story generation often suffer certain limitations such as redundancy, which is the first thing. Then you will find the text that you generate is also not that relevant. It might diverge from its main context to the prompt that you have given. And the third thing could be like you might find factually incorrect information generated by the system. So on this channel, I have done a couple of paper reviews that talk about controlling the hallucination or the factual consistency part of it. So I'll link that papers in the i button, make sure to check that out. So for this paper, authors try to add this controllable knob to this generation process, which you can use to control the relevancy of the generated text. So for this, they define a novel method called inverse prompting where the core idea is to inversely predict the prompt during the beam search. So if you see the process of text generation, you're trying to model the probability of the generated text, let's call it a TG, given the text prompt. But now what they propose is that we should do inverse of this and try to predict the probability of the prompt text given the generated text. So if we do this way, then we'll get the assurance of how good TG is because it's already able to generate TP. So as we go forward in the paper, we will see to how exactly do they do this. But they test their system on open domain poem generation and open domain long form question answering. Long form question answering you can think of as Quora, where you write in a question that might be let's say two lines, but the answer that you're expecting could be let's say floating around for two, three paragraphs. So yeah, these are the two tasks that they evaluate under user study. Okay. Okay, so the first is the baseline method in which they use prompting along with the beam search for generating the text. So both the prompts as well as the text you generate are the sequence of tokens and are given by CG and CP respectively. And we wish to maximize the conditional probability of P of CG given CP. So once the autoregressive training of such models is done, during inference time, we apply beam search to maximize the likelihood of the sequence that we get. So this requires you to define two parameters. One is N, which is the beam size and then the number of time steps t that define the sequence length. So this goes something like this. Let's say time 1, 2, 3, 4 till n. So at this point, let's say you sample n words from the top, which corresponds to the n in the beam size. Then for each of them, you will have again three words. So this is for this. Again, this will generate another three words. This will generate another three words. And then similarly, this process keeps on going. So as you can see, right, this unfolds as in like a tree structure where you have a branching factor of three because at every step you are generating three childs, which again is the beam size and you do it for n length. So this way you have like a lot of combinations from starting to end. So out of all these patterns that might come up, beam search will return a sequence that will have the maximum likelihood or essentially maximum of this term. So this unfolds like this. You have probability of let's say first word given the prompt multiplied by probability of second word given prompt and first word and so on and so forth till probability of let's say last word given p of w1 to w of l minus one words and since they have taken a log so you can convert this into a summation so yeah this is a typical way to how do you generate text given a prompt using the pre-trained language model so this is one of the methods that they use for baseline now talking about the method that they propose which is inverse prompting so as we had already discussed the motivation for this method, which was that with the previous methods, as the distance between the given prompt and the generated sentence becomes larger, it really hinders the generator to keep close connection with the prompt. So which again is like you have a prompt P, let's say, and these are the words that you have generated. As this distance keeps on increasing, it becomes really hard for the model to keep attending to really long dependencies. So authors define a novel beam search scoring function, which is defined as this. Wherein, wherein you have a generated text and you're trying to predict the prompt and you try to maximize this. So for example, let's say for the question answering thing, if this was one of the templates that we had, we had the keyword question, then the actual question, then the keyword answer and then the actual answer. So the way they modeled this into its inverse form was in the form of natural language. And it could look something like this. You'll have the actual answer and then the template saying answers the question, 
and then this segment is what the model is supposed to generate. So under this new transformation, we define CG dash and CP dash, which again correspond to inverse prompt and inverse text. So if we again revisit this example, so here originally the prompt would have been this and model would have generated dollar answer, which is this thing. So this is how you would do it typically if you are considering the baseline method. But under inverse transformation, you have CP dash, which is just the question. You want the model to generate just the question part. And CG dash is nothing but the answer along with the natural language template. So now you use these things and maximize this. Okay. So let's see some more examples. So here, as we can see, you have title, then the actual title, then the text. So entire of this thing becomes a prompt. And your system is supposed to generate the text that follows the title. But since we also want a system to generate things that are relevant and not digress from the main topic, so we convert these things into the inverses. So now the inverse prompt becomes this is from news. And now what the system has to predict is nothing but the title of that article. So this way we again maximize the probability of getting C dash P given C dash G. So what I think is like this text, what you see, right, is from news studies, the new research field, express the emotion. So these are again user dependent or domain dependent to how do you want to choose it? If you were talking about, let's say doing summarization, then you might choose a string saying this text summarizes news about the article. And probably this would be the title that you want to generate. Or you might want to say this text summarizes about the topic. And then the title is something that you want to generate. So yeah, this is again a flexible thing. It depends on the aspect, the prompt that you are targeting. For example, if you see this one, you have title, then the actual title, then genre is poem, author information you have, and then you have the text. Now the system generates a poem. Now the inverse prompt for this becomes poem is written by, and now the system is supposed to generate the author name. So here again, we could have prompted it to kind of generate the title, but this is again one of the ways, as I said, it depends on the aspect of the prompt that you're targeting to maintain the relevancy. So yeah, okay. So if you talk about the implementation part, as we had already discussed, they work with question answering and poem generation, and they majorly target Chinese language, but this is again scalable to English as well. And the language models that they train on Chinese corpus is Megatron and Transformer Excel. Also here you can go through that model training specifications. Okay. Okay. So for open domain long form question answering, they apply inverse prompting in a way to generate long form answers given the question prompts. We generate sub sentences randomly according to the language model LM and do the beam search with inverse prompting in a sub sentence level. Okay. So if you see this equation, the entire aim for us is to generate text given the prompt. The only challenge we have is to generate the text that's also relevant to the prompt and doesn't digress. So for that only we have the concept of inverse prompt which can be seen in this term. Let's call this as T1 and this as T2. And all these lambda parameters that you see over here, right, are fixed by the author. So lambda one was one, lambda is one. Then if I recall correctly, lambda two is some fractional value, which again kind of just is a trade off between how much weight you want to give to T2 and how much weight you want to give to T1. So if you see the term T2 first, we're trying to find the probability of the generated text given the prompt, which again is a left to right traversal in the sequence. And then you normalize by the number of words that you generate. So here T2 takes care of generating fluent text at the first place given the prompt. Now the task for T1 is to take care of the relevancy segment. So as they have said somewhere, like they work at the sub sentence level or sentence level. So let's say if the poem was a paragraph long and a paragraph had, let's say five sentences. So we operate at every sentence level to ensure the relevancy of that sentence with respect to the prompt. So which is the summation what you see over here. And then you're trying to generate the inverse prompt from the inverse text. So this way you'll get an overall likelihood score for a text given a prompt. So yeah, that's about the long form of question answering. Now talking about the scoring function for the poem generation, we can see like both of the terms are same. We do have extra term T3 that contributes to the score, which is conditioned on the generated text. So somewhere in the paper I read like this L formatting is used to incorporate various formatting information, such as the repetitiveness, rhythm, tone, all of that stuff. Now, since we are talking about the poem generation, so these are kind of important aspect when you're writing a poem. So now this also holds a certain contribution in the overall scoring strategy. Rest the intuition behind T1 and T2 still remains the same what we have discussed earlier. So yeah. So lastly, they talk about the self training for the poem generation. So they say since they were using modern Chinese text and they had very few poem formatted text. So it really becomes hard for the model to know what kind of formatting schemes in terms of tone, repetitiveness to kind of 
produce at the first place. So for that, they employ the self-training strategy, which means they randomly select, let's say, 1500 titles. They produce poems out of them and then they fine tune the same model again with the poems that you have generated for a certain number of steps. So now the idea over here is if you do this step multiple times, now your base model will also learn the nuances of how the poem is written in terms of its formatting. So yeah, it's again kind of fine tuning it for the subtask, which is of poem generation. Okay, so yeah, I think now we are done with the paper. They have experiments and all. Having said that, if you like such content, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. Also share it across with your friends to whosoever is interested in such content. I'll meet you in the next one. Bye-bye.